when did the Reichstag fire take place? <clears throat> Brown book? And what did the Brown book contend was behind yeah. the Reichstag fire? Well, this is my third chapter. Uh, and when Hitler was appointed head of the government on the 30th of January, 19. 19- 33, it was a coalition government in which most of the posts were held by uh, conservative nationalists uh, who were hoping to keep him in check. And uh, for some uh, weeks, he, he wasn't able really to think about how to turn this position in a coalition government into a dictatorship. Uh, we talk about Nazi seizure of power, but the seizure of power is a longer process, begins in, in the end of January when Hitler's appointed, but doesn't actually come to an end until July when Germany becomes a one party state and, and a, a, a dictatorship. And the first really important step is on 27, 28 February 1933, when the German parliament building, the Reichstag, is burned down. And Hitler, Goering, Goebbels, all the rest of the Nazis blame this on the communists. And the communists in Germany at that time were very popular. They had 100 seats in the Reichstag from the elections of November 1932, the last free elections in the Weimar Republic before the Nazi party took power. Uh, they if you add together the communists and the socialists vote, it was bigger than the Nazi vote in November 1932. And so these are the main enemies of the Nazis. And Hitler used the Reichstag by blaming it on the communists. The communists have plotted this conspiracy to take over power. And there's some kind of plausibility in this because they'd taken over power violently in Russia in 1917. They tried this in Austria, Hungary in particular, there'd be a short-lived communist revolution mm-hmm. in uh, Munich in 1918 and 19. So uh, it was plausible. Uh, no substance to it at, at all. The communists uh, did not work in that way by 1933. And the idea of a common, violent communist seizure of power was just way, way off the, the mark. But Italy used this to about abolish civil liberties to to so you could have banned the communists arrested them started arresting social democrats before long he was setting up concentration camps to house germany's internal enemies he um uh, sus- he allowed the, the law allowed um phone tapping wiretapping surveillance it allowed arrest without trial all kinds of things the second step then is the so-called enabling act and 23rd of March, 1933, when Hitler forces through the Reichstag by threatening, effectively threatening civil war, by excluding the communists um, uh, and browbeating the middle-class parties, only the socialists oppose this, uh, into allowing a law that enables the cabinet, i.e. Hitler, uh, who's now packing the cabinet with Nazis, to pass laws without reference to the president, Hindenburg, or to the parliament. Uh, and that's the basis for the Nazi dictatorship. So the Reichstag fire, therefore, is very important. The communists, of course, uh, um, they kind of reversed the signs on the conspiracy theory. No, it wasn't them, it was the Nazis. This is a very common feature of conspiracy theories. Whoever benefits from something must have caused it. And so they staged a kind of mock, public mock trial in, in London, and they found the Nazis guilty of starting the Reichstag fire. And uh, whereas the Nazis um, own conspiracy theory about communists starting it, uh, had no traction, even the judges who tried, some of the leading communists in Germany who the Nazis put on trial for the fire, had to acquit them. Uh, Because by by, even in the autumn of 1933, the judges were still relatively independent. uh, And they said, there's just no evidence for it. Not enough evidence. We think it might have been the case, but we, nobody can prove it. So they're acquitted. And only one man, Marinus van der Lubbe, a young, extreme left-wing um, Dutchman, not even a German, not even a communist, uh, he was found guilty and, and, and executed. And the evidence is overwhelming that van der Lubbe was the sole perpetrator of the Reichstag fire. He, what he tried to set a number of other public buildings alight in Berlin, in fact, uh, in the previous days, and, um, and a kind of protest 
misguided protest against the German government's failure to deal with working class unemployment. Uh, it's unemployment. This is the this isn't the depression, right? This is the, the, the following the Wall Street crash. Over a third of German workforce is unemployed. It's a terrible situation. And van der Lubbe wanted to protest uh, the situation. So uh, van der Lubbe was executed. But the belief that he was a kind of front man for um, a, a Nazi uh, plot uh, has not died. In fact, it's been revived recently. 